Hey yo, welcome to the GB Studio Music Editor tutorial or how to make music in GB Studio 3.1. A link to GB Studio is um, available in the description. So, introduction. We're going to talk about a lot today. The music editor, the layout, the tracker, the sequencer, also known as piano roll, uh, songs, pattern, also called loops, instruments, effect commands and tempo. I'm going to put timestamps uh, in the video so that it's easier for you to navigate. So let's talk about the editor. How to work with it, make a loop or even a song, how to change sounds and talk a little bit about sound design. So first open GB Studio, go to View, Music and click the plus symbol to add a new song. This will automatically open a template for you. If you want to rename the song, you have to go to the Assets folder in your Project folder, uh, into Music, and then you can rename the song file here. Uh, but make sure to save before and restart GB Studio afterwards. The music editor is based on Huge Driver, which was written for Huge Tracker which is another um, Game Boy Music software. If you prefer to use this, uh, make sure to use version 1.0 Beta 9 because this is the compatible version for GB Studio. I put a link in the description also. So if you want to see a little bit more of the entire pattern and don't have to scroll a lot, you can go to Edit, Preference and change the UI scaling. Okay, let's talk about the layout. On the left side, you got the song list and the instrument list. <clears throat> In the center, you got the sequencer and piano roll or tracker view. And on the top row, you got a switch between tracker and piano roll. Um, save, pause, play and stop. Pencil tool, eraser tool and the selection tool marker. Also you got an uh, instrument list and um, you can select the four channels, hide them, mute them and uh, in track view this is a little bit different. You got the instrument list and octaves and the rest uh, works a little bit different. The four channels are running from top to bottom, are sorted from left to right and you got a note row an instrument row and an effect command row. So on the bottom left uh, you got the pattern view in the sequencer mode and in the tracker view you have it on the uh, left center and <clears throat> on the bottom center uh, in sequencer mode you got an effect row and as I already said, you got an effect row for each uh, channel and tracker view. And on the right side, we have the internal name for the song, artist name, tempo, and the instrument editor. Okay, let's talk about the basics. Each pattern or loop is made out of 64 steps, which is pretty good to see in the tracker view. Um, each step is made out of an amount of ticks and the tempo sets the amount of ticks. So if I set the tempo to 1, each step is only going to last one tick or one frame. <clears throat> if you set it to, let's say, 6, each step is going to last 6 ticks long. Um, so the fastest tempo you can get in um, the GB Studio Music Editor is then of course tempo 1 and the higher the number the slower the song is running. Tempo 1 equals 960 BPM or exactly one second per pattern. If you want to know the BPM for any given tempo, you can just 
uh, do the math. 960 divided by tempo equals the BPM. That would mean 960 divided by, let's say, 6 is 160 BPM. I got a table here, but if you know, have to know any other value, you can <coughs> do it on your own. The instrument editor. If you click an instrument on the left side, it will open up on the right side and you can um, look at how it's done and edit it right here. About the tracker view and the sequencer, there are some differences in the layout, uh, input method and functionality. Example is the uh, top row here or um, tracker running top to bottom, sequencer running left to right, the channels are displayed in another way, stuff like that. Let us talk about instruments. So instruments and channels. We have four different channels, duty, wave and noise. We have 15 instruments for each channel type and um, we can go from node C3 to B8, so six octaves. And on wave channel, you could go from C2, so one um, octave deeper, to B whatever, because you are much more flexible. Uh, so you could go to higher notes, which you usually don't need at all, but you can go one octave lower. So in sequencer mode, you could do left click to place notes, right click to erase, shift and left to mark, or use the um, selection tool, control C to copy, control V to paste, and um, and the tracker, the input method is with the keyboard, and you could change the keyboard layout to your liking. So usually it's set to this Q is C half tone step up w half tone step up so d is e and so on and what i like much better is this one so all the half tone notes are above it's a little bit more like an actual keyboard and <clears throat> you can uh, change this by going to um, uh, edit preference and then um, linear or piano and, uh, mode, yes. So let's make our own first instrument. I will take duty instrument 15 <clears throat> and you can click test instrument anytime to hear what it sounds like. So as it's all set to zero at the moment, you can't hear anything, but this will change in a little bit. So the first value is length. If it's zero, it's <clears throat> the note will play unlimited and if it's set from 1 to 64 you can shorten it so 1 is the shortest. Um, the initial volume is the starting volume uh, from 0 which is nothing up to 15 which is the loudest and sweep change is um, if the note will play if it will get lower or higher in volume and the higher the number the less the slower is the change going to be so let's let's listen to this minus one or minus seven see or if i even i can make it even shorter with the links yeah okay <clears throat> so sweep time is how fast it will shift frequencies and the higher the number the more it will change and sweep shift means 
it goes up or down an amount uh, of frequency uh, by each step. So let's do this or this. But this only works on channel one, so duty one. This doesn't work for duty two. So um, let me just let me just write this down. Let's say um, um, A C E C. Um, let me copy this to channel two as well. Oops, like this. So if I play this on channel one, and if I play this on channel two, it will sound different, although it's the very same instrument. So it will be ignored by uh, duty two. So let me write down a few things real quick. <clears throat> and duty two. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay, so let's go to the wave channel. This is a little bit more complicated. <clears throat> um, so each um, waveform is made out of 32 steps. So we have the length parameter again, a little bit different volume, only 100%, 50 or 25% or mute. And then we can also select a waveform and draw a waveform. So if you would want, for example, a 50% pulse wave, you would just draw 16 steps um, like high and uh, 16 steps low. So it would be on and off the same amount of time. So this would get generate a 50% pulse wave, also known as square wave. <clears throat> um, if you want to change the volume, you can look into the examples. There are some pretty good examples here. And um, yeah, just I will show you an empty instrument again. You can just draw like any waveform you want and test it, this might be a little bit loud. Okay, that's it. Um, if you want to like look into detailed waveform generation, you could watch one of my older videos where I uh, explain the concept in detail. So let me just write down a little something uh, quick. So, with that okay let's go to the noise instruments <clears throat> uh, here we got the length parameter again um, initial volume so starting volume uh, sweep change so if it gets low or higher in volume and the seven bit counter the noise macro so let me set this all to um, Like an endless playing tone to be able to explain this a little bit better. So the noise macro is basically one, two, three, four, five, six uh, settings playing after each other. So you could make a little bit more complex noise sounds 
then usually without the macro. But to show how it works, I will not use the macro really. So if we just uh, press test instrument, we will just hear like a weird sound. So the highest note you can play is like, if you go on top here everywhere, come on. Yeah, so this is the highest note I can play. And um, if I play this as a, I think G something, G6 or something, be even a little bit higher. Just check. Yeah, this is basically really the highest note you can play in a noise channel. And the lower notes are somewhere um, around here, I guess. I'm, I'm not. I'm not pretty sure because there is no real set frequency that I can see. And um, you have to figure it out and test around a bit. So if I take the highest possible uh, sound, highest possible frequency, sounds like this. And if I activate the 7 bit counter, it sounds a little bit more metallic. So I have like two different options uh, sound wise and the noise macro would be like something like this, for example. So it plays six different noise settings and stays at the last. There are some examples again that you can look into. So at the end, this is all about choosing the right channel for the things you want to do. For example, bass drum or tom sounds work really good on a wave channel or duty one and w they also work on noise a hi-hat snare crash is only um, kind of a nice thing And also, you should think about the sound effects while you're composing. For example, if you would work with uh, FX Hammer, um, then this would the sound effects would work on channel two. So you would put the least important stuff in your song on channel two, because the sound effects interrupt the channel um, when the music is playing. Okay, let's talk about song structure and patterns. <clears throat> so to add a new pattern, we simply click on the plus uh, symbol here or here in the track view. And um, I will copy the old pattern, which I think is more uh, easy in the track view because I can just mark it all four channels at a time, copy and then paste, okay. So now I have um, two, the same pattern two times, but I can change one uh, without affecting the other one. And um, I will just transpose this a little bit. And if I would want to, like the pattern to repeat, let's say replace twice, I could just pick the um, the old numbers. I will replay them. <clears throat> to end a song, you would make an empty pattern. And um, 
maybe a note cut so something that's that's the volume to zero Uh, at all channels. And a loop point to um, like end the song. <clears throat> um, you will use position jump for this and then jump to the pattern uh, to repeat itself to so pattern five. Where we count the in, so it will loop forever in this pattern. Um, to play from position, instead of playing the whole song, you could just um, uh, select a step in any pattern, say this, and then press play, and it will always stop from the uh, play from the position you are at. In track of you, you will just click the step above um, the main window. And now it should um, cycle through this two times and then um, end and loop forever in the last empty pattern. Let's see if it does. So note cut worked and position jump, yeah. If you want to delete a pattern, you simply go to the pattern and press delete or backspace on your keyboard. Okay, now to the final topic, effect commands. You can uh, show effects by clicking into the effect row here and select it from the drop down menu or um, click into the effect row in the tracker view and select it from the drop down menu as well. Or if you just remember the letter or number uh, that is activating the effect. So, for example, here you see vibrator as the number four and then a value. Okay, so let's go through all of them. Apregio is something like, um, like a chord uh, played very fast. So let's say we have a note, a bass note, and then we have two other notes and they will play very fast after each other. So let's just say three seven for example okay <clears throat> you can mark it copy and paste it like everything else and as long as you want the effect to be active um, you have to like type it in for each for each step um, if you are in the sequence of view it's just like the last thing that was set will automatically be pasted in if you click it. So let's listen to the Apregio sound. Yeah, so it plays a few different notes after each other and here you set um, the amount of semitones up or um, yeah up that it wants to play uh, that it has to play next. Um, Portamento is like a pitch shift. So you can pitch shift stuff up with portamento up or down with portamento down uh, as a given value like units per ticks. So if you want to, a song like a sound play like you go portamento up and um, you just place it as long as it should rise up and it will sound like this. Might be a bit fast, so let's try it with a lower vol uh, value. Okay, 16 should be fine. So you can hear it better. Okay, let's go. Yeah. <clears throat> 
try this with a even lower value. Yeah. Okay. So that's this. Uh, same for um, effect number two, which is portamento down. Of course, it's the same, just downwise. Um, tone portamento, also known as legato or slide, will pitch shift um, as portamento up or down does, but only to given to set note. So this is a six and this is a C7. So let's pitch it up exactly to C7. So you would pick tone portamento and then uh, C7. Right, it's, yep. And you would put it behind and units per tick, let's say, let's just guess it's two. Should have written that before, it would be faster. Okay, and let's see. Yeah, it works. So it will reach a given point. It wouldn't like go higher or anything like that. So if you really want to have slides, then this will be the perfect way. Uh, okay, effect. Next effect is a vibrato. Easy to explain. Um, there's a waveform, so how fast it vibrates and the depth. So how many, like, yeah, I think it might be half tone steps. I'm not sh really sure. Um, so we will just make the typical vibrato sound. Oh, still up this. Um, next one would be set master volume, which you usually don't use. It will, um, yeah, set the volume of the whole song at once, left and right. Um, set volume will change the volume of, um, the instrument. So if you run out of instruments and you need different volumes, uh, change the envelope, you can do it here. Uh, then you have volume slide, <clears throat> which is, yeah, raising the volume up or down. And you have set panning <clears throat> for each channel, so you could pan it to left and right, or just left or just right or nothing. And note delay. This is pretty helpful. <clears throat> so let's say we are running at tempo six, as I explained in the beginning. Each step so will um, be made out of six ticks. So if you want a note to play exactly between two steps, for example, you could delay the note if it's tempo six by three ticks and it would exactly play in between these two steps <clears throat> um, okay so note cut is to like kill a note so to yeah cut the volume kind of and you can directly cut it or you can cut it after an amount of ticks which is helpful if you have instruments that are like set to uh, unlimited playing and you want to cut it at some point or cut the end of a track or something, then you can use note cut. <clears throat> um, so to cut it abruptly and not make a, like a volume slide. Uh, position jump is to um, jump uh, inside of a pattern. So if I would put position jump here to pattern one, it would just loop this tiny bit all the time. Okay, 
And so, for example, if you want to make a song that is not made out of 64 steps, or if you have to loop uh, an empty pattern at the end, as I showed before, this would be helpful. And um, also, there's something a bit similar. Um, pattern break. So this will, if it reached this point, it will jump to the next pattern. So if you're going for like three quarter tempo or something like this, that would be uh, placed like here. And then you would have like a waltz tempo stuff. So if you're going for uh, not the four to the floor tempo style, then this is your choice. So I will just jump to the next pattern. Uh, I placed this one too late, so it should be it should be here. Um, okay, so this pattern break. Then we have core routine, <coughs> which is um, can be used inside of your game to call anything synced to the music. So I wanted SF to uh, SFX to play. You could use core routine, or if you want. Um, the scene change you can you can basically use it for anything that is for for anything that is available <clears throat> in the game um, for any event then we have a uh, duty cycle so this is for the um, for the uh, if you are at the duty instruments for the three different uh, wave waveform types um, so 25%, 50%, and 12.5% pulls. Uh, and then you can change it as an effect instead of in the uh, instrument. And <clears throat> uh, set speed. So you could change the tempo uh, mid-song. So um, yeah, at the moment it's 6, so that wouldn't change anything. But if I would set it like say, to 3, it would run double as fast. So let's just put it here. So at the half of um, the uh, pattern, it will change the speed. Yeah. Uh, so if you want any tempo change in your song, this is the way to go. Uh, it should also be mentioned that um, the tempo will change the behavior of some effects. So if you have, let's say, a pitch slide, for example, will react a little bit different at very high speeds and at low speeds, and stuff like that. Okay, that's basically it. So let me play some stuff and play the song.
Okay, some stuff I might have forgotten to mention in the video, so here's some additional information. If you, for example, want to create a um, nice kick drum with a wave channel, you select the waveform that you want to use. I would recommend something like the triangular wave. And then you um, use the portamento down. Uh, kind of high speed. Oops. And you, um, of course, write down the effect command multiple times. And then you would end up with something like this. And you don't have this annoying thing at the end, you would just cut the node at the end. So node cut zero zero. Okay, let's check it out. Mm. Yeah, usually you would go shorter like this, I guess. So you would have a crazy bass drum here. I also forgot to mention that you can select different waveforms for the duty instrument. And 50% square wave is uh, recommended for things like uh, bass drum or toms. So thanks for watching. I hope you could learn something and uh, see you soon. Bye bye.